Hi there, everybody. My name is Jack Willard, and this is the Daily Pop-Off. For Wednesday, October 30th, and Thursday, October 31st, it is early in the morning now of the 31st, still the 30th on the West Coast, Mountain Time, <laughs> since we're going to do a live worldwide rambling tonight, 10 to midnight, the Halloween show, no sense uh, doing a uh, pop-off exclusively for this Thursday. We can talk about how Thursday went when we see you live tonight. 10 p.m. East Coast time, worldwide ramblings. So, um, before I talk about Halloween, um, just want to go over some of the day's activities. Uh, <laughs> the Yankees uh, were way out in front in game number five in the Bronx, and uh, the pitching was great for Mr. Cole, and then in a moment's notice, everything began to uh, change. The Dodgers are simply the better team, and the Yankees, known for their world championships, haven't even been in a World Series since the last one they won, which was 2009. Um, at one time, I was really passionate about uh, baseball and the Yankees, and uh, not so much anymore. I hardly saw any uh, Yankee games in 2024. Saw a few with the man I was taking care of from time to time. Heard a little bit on the radio. But um, baseball is more difficult than ever. It's very hard to get in the World Series and win one. And I don't take joy. I don't look for affirmation for my own life on someone else's accomplishments. Now, I can be inspired by someone else's accomplishments for sure. But I don't need to be obsessed with uh, each baseball game, especially as you get into your fourth quarter. Um, you think about how you're using your time. You think about the flaws in your life and things that you need to change. You start to think more seriously about meeting God. And uh, that means it's time to grow your faith. It would be nice if you could have done it when you were 22 or 17. I didn't come to Christ uh, that early. I came to Christ in 1984. Um, but you find the years turn into decades and <laughs> all of a sudden you're uh, 68 years old and you're dealing with those same old sins in some cases, same old sins, and uh, regrets, you've got more than a few. You've got more than a few. Some things um, weren't entirely your fault, but other times, all you had to do was make a better choice. All you had to do was make a better choice. So the Yankees lost, and frankly, I don't really care too much. Um, they gave their fans in the Bronx one good game on uh, Tuesday, one good game and half of a good game until everything fell apart. So that's the, the, the way it is. Knowing the uh, Yankee ownership, they'll probably say to Aaron Boone, just keep on doing what you're doing. I mean, here everything was hanging in a balance, and he was his usual relaxed self, spitting out seeds. <laughs> uh, Daddy Steinbrenner would have gotten rid of him a long time ago, and everybody else in management, I believe. 
But um, whether they win or lose, it's really not that important to me. November 5th, it is important to me who wins. God is in control either way, and the last days are going to happen either way. All we really hope for on November 5th, if Donald Trump wins and is actually allowed to assume the office on January 20th, don't forget that part, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, is that uh, he will slow the, ble- the, the bleeding for a while. When you read the scriptures, uh, not just Revelation, but other books of the Bible, the words of Jesus himself, you see the last days are not going to be a fun time. And um, there are those who feel they'll be raptured up before it gets really bad, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You've got various viewpoints, and uh, those um, predictions don't mean a whole lot uh, to me. I have to be focused on what I need to do to uh, to uh, grow in my faith, to resist the sin that so easily besets me. I've always felt like, um, well, not always, but for years I felt stuck in the middle of Romans 7, Paul's confession that would get him thrown out of a lot of self-righteous churches these days, I think, you know? People that are so quick to uh, hurl uh, scriptures like they're uh, throwing a fastball at Yankee Stadium. (laughs) So, as for prophets, time will tell if you were for real or you weren't for real. And God help you if you weren't for real, you know. That's uh, something that I won't have to answer for. I don't consider myself a prophet. As I say, there are educated guesses that sometimes come true that usually will come true on a certain percentage. I think that's normal activity. But uh, I do believe in prophets. I do believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit for today. With that said, (laughs) I'm still in first grade. I'm still in first grade. Can you believe it? 11 years on Christian radio playing contemporary Christian music, and I'm still in first grade. Hmm. Every man's battle has become such a reality for me. And uh, the things that I want to do in my heart and my spiritual side, I don't do. The things that I hate at some level uh, that I don't want to do, these things I do. That's what Paul said. So... Um, I just can't live with that being the, the last, uh, testament of my life. You know, I can't live with that. So, um, I've got to do some things that I know are important. I am not looking to be perfect. I'm just looking to be in the process of growing There's hot and there's cold, and then there's somewhere in the middle. And if you're lukewarm, the Lord says, I'll spit you out of my mouth. Um, And sometimes I think maybe that's what I am, lukewarm, lukewarm. And that's scary. It's a a shame that the the Christian life has to be, you know, um, like this. (laughs) Um. We have a heavenly father who loves you, but don't cross him because he'll stick you into the wood chipper and uh, split you into uh, coleslaw. And when he's done, he'll revive you and put you in there again and then again and again for all eternity. People don't know what to do with that. It doesn't really uh, bring them to Christ, those uh, fear tactics, you know. Um So people interpret various verses, and there's various doctrines that they have different interpretations on. Uh, The idea is that Jesus died on on the cross for our sins, and once you have received the gift of Jesus Christ as your Savior, that's uh, cemented. Uh, You can't um, get saved on Tuesday and lose your salvation on Thursday. But yeah, people uh, gleefully uh, quote other verses and say, well, I guess that's not the way it is. So, you know, it's really, um, you know, you, you would really, uh, 
you would really uh, hope that um, the method of being scared to death of going to hell is not the main motivator for someone to come to Christ. You know, we like to talk a lot about things we don't fully understand. Anyway, enough of that. That's just a little spiritual pontificating on my part uh, for this round. When we do Worldwide Ramblings, we always close with Scripture verses. Halloween, I just see it as a day where the kids get to dress up and uh, uh, get candy. I remember how excited I was. I think I was a skeleton one year. That's the only costume I really remember. I used to have a photo of it. In fact, it, it may be in my photo album of me wearing a skeleton costume. Uh, so I don't see it as uh, if, if kids are out there um, trick-or-treating. Uh, usually, uh, if there's nobody home, they don't uh, trick. Um, I don't see it as anything other than what I used to as enjoy as a kid. Um, it's not the personification of pure evil to me. If you uh, let your kids go out and uh, get, gather uh, candy and costume, I wouldn't suggest they go out as demons or uh, something that is absolutely offensive to God, Satan and what have you. I don't think we have too many Satan costumes anymore. People are into other things. They might go out as uh, Freddy Krueger or whoever the latest uh, bad guy is, political costumes, etc., etc. So, um, you know, we'll get a few kids here, maybe a little bit uh, more because it's going to be warmer it's going to be uh, warmer here on the uh, East Coast for um, for tonight. Could be like in still in the sixties. Uh, we're talking about uh, near eighty degrees today, if not more. Maybe setting a record on this All Saints Day, or is that really November first? <laughs> Uh, Halloween 2024, uh, it is uh, going to be warm. And uh, those developments, you know, where they love to drive into, they drive their kids into them, they're going to see hundreds of kids in some spots go to the uh, rich side of town or the rich development, you know. It's kind of unfair when you live three miles away and you're driving into a place like that. But that's how people behave. You know, we don't have uh, consideration too much in 2024. Um, everything is turned upside down. Everything is turned upside down. And um, that's the way it is. Now on the, uh, the uh, 30th, Wednesday the 30th, Donald Trump had several rallies. Uh, he played off of uh, Joe Biden, saying that all his supporters, all us uh, Trumpers, are garbage. He got, got in a brand new uh, dump truck that said uh, Trump Vance 2024. He put on the reflective vest. You'll see it in the thumbnail. Well, you probably have seen it already. And, uh, uh, you know, did a little press conference from uh, sitting in the truck, you know. <laughs> It was cool. And then he decided to wear that reflective vest on stage uh, for a rally. And he's uh, really, uh, you know, on point for the most part. He can't help but be, you know, bad boy Trump a little bit, of course. That's still in his DNA. I can't, uh, I can't come against anybody who uh, still has sin in their life when I still have sin in my life, you know. Um, but... Um, there's a lot of substance in his speeches and what have you. And I think he's past the stupid comedian he didn't even know about um, who um, wasn't funny at all at the Madison Square Garden rally well before Trump got on stage there. Um, so Joe Biden, just um, just a bitter old man. I don't see how he can be. Well, I, he's in cognitive decline big time. Our president is. He wasn't competent enough to uh, to stand a trial for uh, his crimes of uh, of um, having um, documents, even as a senator, that he should have never brought home. Um, 
well, I just don't think uh, he, his memory is good enough. But it, it's okay if he stays president of the United States. You know, other leaders must look and they must uh, say, America is nuts. America is nuts. So we're hoping for uh, Donald uh, Trump, um, whose father's middle name is Christ, his mother's name is Mary, and he is Donald John Trump, John the Messenger of Christ, bringing the good news in the Gospel of John. Yeah, there could be something there. There really could. And those long lines, those early voting lines. But you know they're going to do everything they can, and they're still trying. Not, not, nothing is too low for them. Um, <laughs> they used to say when he goes low, we go high. Well, they, they're so far into the sub-basement that you can't even hear them when they scream out, you know. Uh, they said they bust in uh, people that may have been paid to the Kamala D.C. rally, and all she wanted to talk about was Donald Trump, Donald Trump. So they put it on a loop at the Trump rally, and it was so funny. It was uh, so funny. Other than that, in the world of Bob Joyce, you know, you have to be really careful about content or you're going to lose your credibility. There's one that, um, with that familiar announcer voice, again, Bob Joyce, producer and pianist, reveal he is Elvis. You know, that's put up on TikTok, and then it's taken here and copied. I guess they don't mind that it is. And it's just full of inaccuracies. Uh, does that matter? Who the hell is, is Glenn Hayden? Who the hell is Glenn Hayden? That's not the pianist of Elvis Presley. And I haven't seen any pictures, and you didn't show any pictures, of uh, Glenn Hardin. Glenn Hardin, the man who wrote Count Me In for Gary Lewis and the Playboys. He wrote for John Denver and many others. And yes, he uh, was the pianist for Elvis on stage in the later uh, years. Now, there is a guy there who used to uh, play bass that looked a little like Glenn Hardin in bib overalls, but Glenn Hardin is a very rich man, and he wouldn't come to church in bib overalls. <laughs> and um, so, you know, the, these things, um, I guess it's just make the money, make the money, and then wonder when the views when you get to the point where the views start to slow down and you know, when I put something up here, I try to be accurate and I try not to copy someone's work verbatim, but that's, if that, that's what they do, that's what they do. But when it starts to be the same voice will tell you that Elvis died in 1977. You can find this if you look as who tells you the reasons that Bob Joyce uh, is Elvis, maybe Elvis, whatever. It's the same voice on the same channels. So think about that. Think about that. Whatever. Um, but um, we're doing okay here in uh October. Um, this is our last day uh, that uh, we have uh, for our uh, channel revenue. So thank you for hitting the thanks button. Um, we're not where we were in the summer, but we've just beat out uh, September. That's thanks to uh, you, you, very loyal audience. Here we came on live to do the pop, uh, the, 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 the pop-off, the daily pop-off. Uh, um, well, it was uh, yesterday morning. Now, we came on live at 12.30 in the morning, and uh, um, heck, we, uh, we got a fairly big audience, you know, a fairly big audience, and uh, that, was, that was very, very nice. Sometimes I feel guilty I'm keeping people up, or I woke somebody up, you know. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. Um, you know, you have to come on at different times. Some people get mad because they kind of see this as like, you know, a little club where they're going to talk amongst themselves. And, and that's really mostly what they care about and whatever, you know, that's true. And I notice, uh, I mean, heck, uh, John B. Wells will be talking about a serious subject on his uh, channel, you know. He does the offbeat topics like Art Bell used to do. He was a weekend host on Coast to Coast AM um, back a few years ago. 
And I'll look at his chat, and they're talking about uh, automobiles and various classic cars and stuff. So it's that's the way it is. You know, that's the way it is. But some people, you know, we, we are uh, blessed that they contribute uh, to the topic and what have you at hand. And uh, we don't just talk about Elvis slash Bob Joyce. We talk about spiritual things. We talk about politics. Try to limit the politics. As I say, uh, I have three parts up now to our Homage to Rush, as in Rush Limbaugh series. We use the Rush theme. Yeah, it's getting some views, but I, as I already knew, you know, you're going into a crowded field of politics, but I got something to say too, you know, I got something to say too, and so do you, so do some of you, and we appreciate that when you, uh, you have something to say about the topic at hand, because, um, you know, this is a crucial time. This is not just another election. This is not just another election. So, um... We, uh, we won't do a fourth, uh, homage to Rush show if Kamala Harris becomes, uh, the next president of the United States, because there's, there's no point. I'll leave it to the big guys at that point. What are you going to say? Are you going to wallow in the, in, in, in the sewer every day? You're going to swim in the sewer every day and say, oh, this is a, you know, no, I have no desire then, uh, you know, uh, it's all in God's hands. It's all in God's hands and live out my life uh, in, in an America that will become increasingly unrecognizable, unrecognizable. I see Shaq is part of this, uh, this new, um, I guess it's a PSA, a public service announcement on uh, turning the hate down, turning the hate down. And they have uh, various people on there, you know, and what what they really um, mean. I mean, obviously, I'm not saying they're not motivated by college students that are out there saying from the river to the sea. Kill all the Jews. Whoever thought we'd see that outside our universities in 2024. I mean, the Z generation is here. The Y generation is here. And a lot of them are um, are um, <laughs> sad, pathetic individuals, you know. But we've all been sad and pathetic ourselves in a different way, perhaps, you know. So, um, and when the parroting stops and when uh, uh, the evil government starts to seep in and have no respect for the Constitution or the American way and... Uh, We've become so open-minded that our brain has leaked out. Well, then, of course, catastrophe is on the way, and we are experiencing that in real time as I speak to you now, as I speak to you now. Um, so it's going, to, uh, it's going to be interesting on November the 5th. Um, voting lines are long. Hopefully they can protect those ballots. Um, as I say, I used a paper ballot on Monday when I voted, uh, but then I fed that into a machine. I fed that into a machine. There were two machines there. And as I say, I waited on a line of about 75 people. So, so there you go. There you go. So that's our daily, uh, pop off for, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, the 30th and 31st. We'll be live tonight, 10 p.m. East Coast time for a Halloween edition of Worldwide Ramblings. All right. Have a have a great Thursday. It's going to be a beautiful day here in the Hudson Valley. Karen is going to try to get her bucket of bolts inspected again. She drove some miles, which was needed. <laughs> this is just a car she drives maybe less than 50 miles a year. It's the backup that when I'm not available to take her someplace or what have you, uh, but uh, most of the time, you know, we're in my car and yes, she drives my car sometimes and that will lead you to pray. That will lead a person to pray. You know, if I'm in the car, I want to drive because otherwise I'll just be saying, Karen, no, you're, you're too much in the middle of the road <laughs> and stuff like that. You know, it's scary, 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 scary stuff. But, um, she's a pretty good driver. She's a pretty good driver overall. So we'll see you tonight. Take care. God bless you. Bye-bye.